So my name is Katie Tang. I'm the District 4 Supervisor in San Francisco, and uh, I started out um, actually growing up in San Francisco, uh, lived there, attended all the public schools here, and when I was in college, I had actually spent two summers interning at City Hall in two different offices, and uh, afterwards um, really fell in love with the experience here at City Hall and seeing how a young person like myself could actually be involved in decision-making processes to improve our communities. And so after graduating from college, I was very interested in coming back to work in City Hall and ended up working in the Mayor's Budget and Policy Office. And shortly after that, uh, unexpectedly joined the Board of Supervisors on the legislative branch of government, working for former Supervisor Carmen Chu as a legislative aide. And um, then in 2013 was uh, unexpectedly appointed to become Supervisor of District 4 um, after several vacancies arose and uh, since then ran for election twice. And so here I am serving now as the Sunset District representative. For this November's ballot, I am the lead sponsor for a measure, which is Proposition E. And this is a measure designed to bring arts funding and cultural services funding uh, to San Francisco for the long term. And since 1961, actually, we had um, a dedicated source of revenue from our hotel tax revenues, uh, dedicated to arts funding, a portion of that. Uh, there are studies to show that uh, when a city or a place has um, arts and cultural institutions and experiences that tourists actually stay for longer periods of time. And so there is, again, that direct connection and why we sought funding from the hotel tax revenues uh, to fund arts and cultural services. Uh, since the early 2000s, um, that funding source was not stable. And so I wanted to make sure that San Francisco is a place that continues to be known for its rich diversity and cultural and arts experiences. And so we wanted to be able to restore that historic link between hotel tax revenues and arts and cultural fund services funding. We are also hoping that um, through a creative way that we've been able to structure this funding that we'll be able to fund new things such as supporting cultural districts that will be established here to preserve, um, again, the diverse cultures and um, uh, diversity in, in services that we want to offer to all communities um, and also spread um, the arts services and funding throughout the entire city, geographically speaking. Uh, the neighborhood that I represent, for example, in the Sunset District, we don't have a whole lot of funding for arts. We only see arts funding uh, or even installations when they're associated with public projects um, that are uh, that are put forth by the city and there's a requirement for arts funding. But without that, we wouldn't see art really. So our office has personally invested in a lot of arts funding to create even things like murals that are very easy to do, uh, but we need more than that. And so I'm really hoping that with the stabilized arts funding through Proposition E, that all neighborhoods, not just the Sunset District, but everywhere, will be able to have and to benefit from, from this funding. I think it's really important for young people to be engaged uh, in elections and voicing their opinions. And a lot of times I know that it's, it seems that there's a lot going on nationally and that there's so little that we can do. But I hope that, that especially our young people who are in college and so forth realize that what they also do on a local level is just as important, if not more because we actually have in local government direct control over the environment that you're in, your communities. Um, we have the ability to affect change on a quicker level. And especially here in San Francisco, it's amazing because a lot of times we don't have a federal government that, or even a state government that is responsive to so many of the needs and issues that we face, whether it's about housing, education, healthcare. So those are all things that we in San Francisco have locally championed and then served as an example and model for state and federal governments. So to the extent that young people can get involved locally and elect officials that reflect your values and what you'd like to see happen here, again, that can set a trend for who we also elect on a, on a state level, on a federal level, and have that domino effect. So we're in such a great place here in San Francisco where we set trends nationally, um, worldwide, and it starts from home. So let's, uh, you know, where, whether it's your university campus or whether it's um, your adopted home, we welcome all of your opinions. 
there are so many ways that young people can get involved. Um, they can either join existing clubs, such as you know maybe our local, um, just as an, as an example, Democratic Club here in San Francisco, or they could start their own clubs. In fact, I think it's a great thing for uh, people to start um, their own efforts, maybe on their own school campuses. Um, that's a wonderful way to um, engage your peers. Um, maybe there's a particular issue that you care more about than others, so maybe you want to have a lens on environmental issues or measures that come forth or arts issues or whatnot. You can decide how it is that you want to approach it, and I think that's the beauty of, of really the world that we're in is that you can do anything you want to be involved. There's so much at stake, and so I really hope that people remember that they can vote, and they can vote early as well. But now through November 6, uh, 2018, on Tuesday, I hope that people will either come to City Hall here in San Francisco or find their local polling stations, or if they have an absentee ballot, to submit those and get those in early. So get out the vote. <laughs>